Hello and welcome to my first Firewatch video. Um, this is the second attempt because the first time there was a technical difficulty where the entire video is a black screen, so that was good. Um, I just finished the first day, so I feel like I'm going to need to do it again. So yeah, I literally just finished the first day and stopped. Uh, so let's go again. This is the first time I'm playing this game, obviously, other than <laughs> when I tried to just play it just now. Uh, and the first time I've really played a game like this, I've never really played any sort of uh, narrative games or this sort of uh, style of game. I'm not even sure what uh, genre this is supposed to be. You see Julia. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. Hopefully I'm saying that right. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. Uh, so what? what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. You're pretty. You are pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Well, that moved quickly. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it in with her to class. There's also an Im intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. I'm going to do this one this time. I did the uh, German Shepherd last time. Uh, Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him, you love him too. Cool. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. Uh, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Hopefully I can remember what to do for this first day, and then it will be brand new to me. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold onto a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Frolic like a Victoria's Secret model sounds good. Julia is right. You are very pretty. Nope. Keep forgetting I need to click some of these things. These graphics are so cool. I really like the kind of... I don't know, what's the word, like, geometric, uh... kind of look. But also all the really cool shadows and everything. Ah, I can use the jog button, it worked out. Uh, two forks, fire, lookout, eight miles ahead. <laughs> 
1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at night. There's a festival in town and it brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. Scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. You manage to scare all three of you. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Okay. Uh, Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut. 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. It grieves you commutes back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that it'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and, and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24 hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister, sorry, 1989. Julia's sister's Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some other time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it takes her a minute to look in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Hey. 
into the lookout tower. Turn on the power. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, um, you're... Probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Good morning, okay, Henry. I think well, I'll leave that good there for now. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. So yeah, see you in the next one.